now this is quite a big statement, but Dorian ruined bodybuilding, in my opinion, for at least 10 years. Yeah. So welcome guys, this is episode three of the Phantom Podcast and today joined with very special guests. We've got Joseph Flynn, Jay-Z Bodybuilding. Introduce yourself. Hello everyone, nice to see you again. Hopefully you didn't get too bored of my face last time. <laughs> Another guest we have today is Mr. Barbarian Sam Bennett. So hello Sam to the audience, to, the, to all the fans. <laughs> How's it going? It's been a while since I've been um, talking about bodybuilding, but here I am. <laughs> I know, yeah, I think we... Uh, back a few years yeah i mean the last time i think you you uh, interviewed me didn't you on your podcast yeah that must have been three and a half years oh, ago years, yeah 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 it's gone quick so yeah i turn. did the uh i did the thumbnail for that i remember yeah yeah, yeah. it's gonna explain well describe to the audience that uh, i used to run temple gym this was back in 2007 to 2012 and that's when i first met sam uh, when did you start coming down Temple, Sam? So I started coming down Temple probably, it was after my first show, and, well, sorry, it was in prep for my first show. That was the first time I went down. The first time I met yourself was after my first show. And I remember going that, up to Do the you want to tell everyone what, what show it was? <clears throat> oh, gosh, it was, show. It, was a, it was a muscle manual one, I think. That's how old I am. And I was 16, 16, 17, and I went obviously to temple and um you know i said could you get a day pass and so i goes have you been to a gym before <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Cheers. Health, and safety, <laughs> health and safety um so, and yeah do you want to just oh, I mean, do tell everyone what muscle, muscle mania was back back in the day? i don't think it exists anymore does it but back in the day like mid-90s yeah, uh, was um it was heavily heavily like american influenced um, mm. I, I should probably say it, it kind of gave the basis for shows like Pure Elite, Miami Pro. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Of today, like you can kind of see the same format, and like they'd have the suit rounds, all of that. Um, and Muscle Mania, yeah. So, I mean, where I did it was in Felixstowe, um, down south, and it was a natural show. Oh, there we go, natural. Um, Ulysses Jr. was like the, the cover face of so it. What, what class was you in? Junior bodybuilding or junior sort of? The, back then, there was no physique class. Was back that? then, no physique. It was just junior bodybuilding. Yeah. And so, was it teenage or because obviously you got teenage and junior? So, was you a teenage? Obviously, sixteen, you would have been teenager. There was meant would you to been be competing with the juniors. Yeah, it was one of them. There was meant to be a teenage class, um, but the numbers weren't good enough, so they just put them both together. Just disappeared. Um, I think we bored him. <laughs> okay, so you, how did you get on in your first show then? Yeah, not too bad. Um, I, I was the highest placed under 18. Um, in the juniors, I came four out of fifth because there's only two of us in the under 18s. So, okay. um, yeah, top two. <laughs> um, but that kind of really started the, the love of it back then. Um, the love hate relationship. Yeah, like because you have a taste of it. But obviously seeing, you know, the bigger guys and, you know, like the open bodybuilders, I, I wanted that. I wanted to look like that on stage, you know. So before before then, how long had you been training previous to, to competing? Um, I, do you know, I did my first show at 16 as well. I, I think I started kind of casually at 14, um, but I kind of got more into it when I was kind of still like year 11 last year at school. Um, the main reason you're, you're I was you're pretty, you're pretty young then to start bodybuilding. Yeah, I remember it being, you know, kind of the odd one out of school. Like, I'd bring, like, flex magazines to read. And uh, I'd be there with, like, meal prep, like, fish and rice and all of that. And people fish and rice like, cake. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be looking, thinking, what is wrong with this guy? Like, so what, what, what year would have this been then, if you were sort of 16? 2011. But I, would, okay. I said it would have started in 2010. Like rule. 2011, God. I so still, uh, I remember, like, when I was probably getting years. into bodybuilding, you know, it was all like Branch Warren, Dennis Wolf, those guys. And, you know, most people haven't even heard of Dennis Wolf nowadays. I know, yeah. I was actually um, listening to one, one of his podcasts with him, Jay Collar, actually. And we do sort of forget about Dennis Wolf, don't we? I mean, we forget how good he was. Yeah. He, um, I think it was the, the year he came fifth. I think it was fifth or sixth. 
Um, so it was, was it fifth or six? What year? I think it was. It must have been like two thousand and eight or two thousand and nine. Two, and yeah, two thousand nine because he looked really good in two thousand seven. He didn't do very well two thousand eight. Yeah, then, I know one year. Um, apparently, he carved up on cookies, and I think it was yeah. Chad Nichols. It might have been with Chad. But... Yeah, two two thousand seven. He was with Milos. Um, and then yeah, didn't do too too good in two thousand eight, and then I think he did all right in two thousand nine. Because he used to have a proper big rivalry with Branch Warren. I always remember that. And they'd always yeah. be like fifth or sixth or third and fourth. And... They were two totally different physiques, weren't they? Yeah. Two totally different. Um, did you ever get to meet uh, Dennis Wolf? Yeah, yeah, I met Dennis Wolf um, at the Body Power 2012, hmm. when Body Power was good. <laughs> uh, was he with BSN back then? Yeah, BSN, yeah. Um, Zach Khan was with New Tracks. Yeah, um, the good old days. Muscle Tech was there. Trying to think of us. Um, Sean Roden was there with, oh gosh, was it Cy Cytech? Cytech, yeah, say. yeah. I remember. Um, I think it was must have been two thousand and ten or eleven. That was Body Power Weekend, and that Dennis came to Temple Gym with Kevin Norton because Kevin Norton used to work for BSN. He used to do all the shoots, and uh, so I, I let him in the gym. I was wearing a pair of shorts. He goes, "Bro, how do I get calves like yours?" <laughs> <laughs> I'll swap for your shoulders, arms, back, chest, and whatever. But he was Ro- like, Ro- my calves. Yeah. Roly and Brandon came down then, didn't they, as well? Yeah, Roly came down. That's when I met Sybil, and um, I got to know Sybil. I think that was 2011. Yeah. And uh, I sort of picked, picked Sybil and uh, rolled up from the airport and got to, got to know him, took him around shopping. Yeah. I, I always remember, I think it was, I want to say 2013, um, Leverone. Lever- Flex Wheeler, Ben Pekorski, Kai Green, and there's Flex. one other came down Temple Gym. Flex um, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Sean Ray as well. I think it might. Yeah, have been. that's when I was. Uh, that's when I departed from Temple. Yeah, and I remember like them coming down and seeing Kai Green and being like, still to this day, like I probably say the most amazing physique I've seen, like in clothes, for example, like just a, the size of someone. The thickness in there. Was he wearing a, like a red hoodie? Was he? <laughs> yeah, that was the uh, muscle meds days. Wore that same hoodie everywhere. Have you ever met um, Kai, uh, Joe? No, 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 no. Never met Kai. So, yeah, he's really a freak. Cool isn't he? I'll tell you what. I remember him taking time out. Um, they all went to the San Carlo, um, which is was basically just up the road from Temple. Temple yeah. Um, and I, I actually worked that shift at Temple. Um, and I closed up. It must have been like we're talking like ten something. And uh, I saw Kai outside the restaurant, and it was raining. And I was the biggest Kai Green fanboy there is. Um, and I went up to him and I said, "Oh, Kai, Kai, what advi- what advice would you give to a aspiring eighteen year old bodybuilder?" And honestly, he stood out in the rain for at least fifteen minutes and spoke to me. Yeah. And, the, and the guy, I think it was a guy called Adam Blonde Hair, who worked for Muscle Meds. Yes, yes, uh, who's yeah, like his Adam, manager. Yeah. And he was like, Kai, come in, come in. And he's like, hold on, hold on. And that just, my respect for him went up so much. Mm. Did he give you any good tips then? Um, you know how he talks in the videos where he's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. a bit like that. Yeah, That's I remember like, like, yeah. he didn't actually give me any training tips. It was more like, find your why. If you really want to do this, put all your effort into it. And he just spoke about all the me- like mentality side. Never spoke That's about good. anything to do with training or diet. <laughs> but the training and diet side is pretty basic, and everyone knows or knows how to train and how to eat. It's pretty basic, isn't it? But yeah, when, yeah. I when, mean, the bird, I, uh, when the birds fly south and the wind blows to the east, <laughs> you know. I, I met Kai. Um, I think it was 2016. Body power, yes. And his one of his agents, Jag. Um, he says, oh, do you mind if we use the gym? Obviously, the gym was closed that night. And uh, I said, who's coming? I said, we've got Kai Green, Ulysses, and Mike Rashid. I wanted to do a photo shoot, video shoot. I goes, yeah, of course. And I came and I opened the gym up for him. And they must have stayed for about six hours just shooting all night. And but they were so cool. You know, they let, the, 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 I think they live streamed it and people were like, queuing outside the gym to come here. But Kai really, you know, took the time out to talk to me and you know, became, you know, Every time I've seen him after that, he always come and say hello to me. So I've got a lot of respect for Kai because, you know, he's so famous, isn't he? I think, what, I mean, you look at him now. Um, I mean, I don't follow 
a lot of bodybuilders these days, but you look how he's branched out into films. Um, mm -hmm. I think he does like the like Bollywood stuff like that. And you know, fair play to him. He's you know, like a lot of money, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah Back so, in, um, when you yeah. was managing Temple, or right, well, both of you were there that short brief period of time where you was both there. Who who was the freakiest guy that walked through the door? Up from Sam Bennett. <laughs> 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 he, couldn't, he couldn't even fit through the doors. You know what? The one in the time we were both there, I always remember. I know it sounds silly, but Nikolai, because he had massive Nick, shoulders. Nick Bond, yeah, yeah. And he was like an amateur bodybuilder, but just had like massive shoulders. Yeah, Nick uh, was from the Denmark. He was uh, an amateur, but he was really tall, and he's about six foot five. Yeah, and he was like super wide. He looked like like Ivan Drago, but like on steroids. <laughs> Yeah, one guy that always um, reminds me as well, a guy called Martin Kelstrom, who sponsored oh, yes, yes. Yeah, he, not, not like a pretty physique, but just massive. Massive. Um, yeah. He was in good condition as well, wasn't he? But, um, yeah, just, just built like hard. a bridge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are the days when Body Pub would come on and you get... Back then, we didn't really appreciate it, though, to be honest, because at the time, you think, you know, what's going on? But you didn't realise Body Pub would end so quick and... Um, and after sort of 2016, 17, it just got, got worse than it, Body Power. So I, I think the day when couldn't... Body Power died was when, I think it was Lee Haney was there. And I remember Lavrone being there as well. I think the queue for Lavrone was like five people. <laughs> and the queue for the Hodge twins was like three hours. I think yeah, that, that, was, that was rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they, they phoned me, the, the, uh, their agent phoned me when I was ultimate, the, the original UFB. And they said... Um, we want to, the Hodgtons want to come to the gym. And I said, who the fuck are the Hodgtons? Never heard of them. <laughs> and uh, they took offense to it because you don't know. I was no, I don't. And that's, I think that's the same year Kevin Lerone came. And when Kevin came, I sort of welcomed him in. And I, I really appreciate it because at Body Power, no one recognized him. So it's sort of, sort of, do you know what I mean? So when he came to my gym, I sort of welcomed him and let him train for free. And probably well, I remember, um, funny enough, Rich Piana. So when Rich Piana came down Temple, um, it was the first year I worked there after you'd left and uh, Rich Piana's manager or whatever called up the gym and said like, oh, uh, Rich is coming up. Um, can you get things ready? And they told Dorian and Dorian goes, who? And he goes, <laughs> oh, is that the guy with no legs? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I mean, to be fair, like we did get that that year, like a lot of the Gymshark crew would like call up um, yeah. and all these athletes and expect to like train for free. But yeah. Never, yeah, never <laughs> Yeah, they were good old days. I remember what the UFB, um, we had, I think we've had everyone at the gym. We had obviously Ronnie Coleman, Flex, uh, Sean Ray came down, uh, Branch, Good Spire, you name it. It was all the stars were there, and um, luckily they've all signed all my posters for me. So, as you see at the new Ultimate Finish, they've all sort of uh, they're all on the wall. How long was you there for, Sam? Um, I, tell you what, I was literally working there um, probably until six months before it closed, and then yeah. I stopped working there, and then obviously it just shut abruptly. Why, Why did you stop working there? Um, do you know what? I just wasn't really getting paid. Um, <laughs> I was making up my own wages, um, which was a bit annoying. Um, and I'm trying to think. Oh, that was it. I started working at GNC. Oh, yeah, yeah um and you know it was a more st much more stable job um <laughs> and I, yeah i mean i remember literally so i left my last show was in well sorry i was the last person actually to win a bodybuilding title from temple that the original yes. temple so i won the naba central britain in my age category and i think it was four days later i went down to the temple and it was closed down <laughs> And everyone was there as well. Like loads of people had come. There was just a lock on the door. It had been like, um, you know, barred up and everything like that. And I think we didn't get answers for weeks. It was just people so what, what, what happened? And owed a lot of rent money. <laughs> so what happened is it? Yeah, I mean, I'm That's surprised. Right. I'm surprised it did last as long as it did when I left. Because obviously, when I was there, I did proper take care of the place, and I, I did care about the place and. You know, the place was thriving when I was there. I, you know, we had loads of people competing. Um, it, was, it was good buzz about the gym, wasn't there? But when I left, it sort of, I could see 
sort of deteriorate because um, obviously Dorian wasn't interested in the bodybuilding scene. He was too busy partying and Lewis, who was looking after him, he wasn't really into the bodybuilding scene. So it was sort of, uh, I could see it coming. But I'm surprised it did last as long as it did. Well, that's the thing. Like, I mean, I always said, like, to people down there, if I could manage it with someone else, mm. I reckon we'd do a much better job. I mean, it's just simple things like having stocking or, you know, having Temple Gym t-shirts during body power. It's common yeah. sense. Yeah. Opening know. on time. Looking yeah, at that helps. <laughs> simple, basic thing. Joe, I take it you never went to the original Temple? No. Um, I know my, my granddad, I was just talking the other day, weren't we, but my granddad went a couple of times, only on uh, one-off sessions, like for, throughout the years. And uh, he, he trained. He, he did because my granddad used to do karate and kung fu. He actually trained at the same place when it was a uh, like a karate place. place. Yeah, as well. Um, so he's told me like little bits and pieces and stuff, mainly about how much fucking mold was grown on the walls. But yeah, it would have been cool to see. In, in when, it, when it rained really badly upstairs, the water. Oh, the back area. Really yeah, the water that by the um, the back by the back machines. Yeah, the terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and like yeah, the power would go out sometimes, and there wasn't like no one would switch it on. They just get their like phones out or like lighters, and everyone would just carry on training. It was just insane. <laughs> Health and safety wasn't a thing back then. The first time I went to Temple Gym, we we're talking. Oh God, hold on. Um, Dorian had just competed in the. 91 British Grand Prix in Nottingham and I I was I think I was still at college and I I saved up and I brought myself like a camcorder so obviously there was no phones with cameras back then so I brought myself a camcorder it was about that that big and I brought it and I filmed it at the um concert hall in Nottingham and so I filmed it all and I used to collect all the all the videos all the shows I used to compete in and one Saturday I took a trip to Snow Hill station there was it was called the weeder shop back then and uh, obviously it's not there anymore so i, I walked in and i said in there he was, it was literally about a couple of weeks after the show so he was still in condition that's the he had his uh blonde mullet you know the long hair i think it was 91 wasn't it and he was there reading a body body magazine so i, was, I looked i walked in i was sort of a bit starstruck and i went up to him i said oh well, i've got you on a bit of video tape from the, the grand prix from a few weeks ago and he says oh I, can you, uh, would you mind bring it down to the gym for me? And uh, I'd like to see it. So we, um, so the following week, it was a Saturday, I think. Um, so I caught the train to Temple Gym. So I couldn't turn back then. And uh, the door was closed, and the gym was closed to the public. And I could hear like noise downstairs in the, in the, down the basement. So I opened the door, and it was only him and I think it was Kenny Brown training, the training back. And uh, so I saw him train. I thought, do I go up to him and Say Dorian needs a video or what? So Debbie was behind the counter and she goes, Look, don't don't talk to Dorian, just do what you're gonna do, just leave the video and basically fuck off out. <laughs> so that's the first time I went to Temple. So it must have been thirty years ago. I was a little nipper. Yeah, he never did thank me for that video, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um I I remember for well, funny of Kenny Brown, because he always used to walk around I mean even like when I was working at GNC about seven years ago. Walk around town in his rag top and just talk talk about protein. Never buy anything from GNC. But just talk <laughs> about it. And we used to have um, Chris Joyce as well. He, he'd always oh, yeah. pop in. Um, so Chris Chris Joyce was um, he was like a famous bodybuilder back in the eighties, wasn't he? Might Mister was he Mister Birmingham? I think. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he, he was. A good, he had a good physique. To be fair. Yeah. Did you ever hear from um, Joe? Have you heard of Chris Joyce? Uh-huh. Yeah, he was like a famous. I mean, he was like before Dorian's time, wasn't he? And uh, I think he did got a couple of shows and just lost his way, so to speak. It's, it's weird. Like, he kind of got caught up in so many, like, different addictions. But he, you could still see, like, his calves were just peeled constantly. Still really strong. Like, he probably does, didn't eat, like, towards the last, like, 10 years of his life. And he'd be there, like, chest pressing, like, three plates aside. It was it was so strange. Yeah, um, he's he was a character. Yeah, he was um, became homeless after a while, didn't he? Towards the end, I used to feel sorry for him because he used to come down the gym and sort of uh, in his dirty clothes and just sort of, sort of begging for money. And you you know what he would end up doing. So, I, mean, I was, was no terrible. surprise. I, I used to uh, say to him, uh, Chris, put all the weights away and sweep the gym, and I'll give you a quid out the till. <laughs> give you a quid out. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's too Anything generous. to get out of work. <laughs> so, did you go to the new temple when it opened? No. Yeah, uh, I have. Yeah. So, Joe, I, you got um, nothing to compare it to, have you? Not compared to the old one. I, I went to it when they actually originally opened the, the new one when Lewis was running it and they had a roof panel missing from the ceiling. Yeah. Um, I know then they, I think they sold it or someone sold it to completely new owners. I, I haven't been back since. So they had, a, mean, had all the original equipment. Yeah, at the but, time uh, it did. Yeah, it still still had um, the pullover, still had the original hammer strength stuff. Did they still have the rear delt? Shit, I can't remember. And Bales bought the pullover, didn't they? From, yeah. Paid silly money for it, didn't they? Undisclosed fee. <laughs> Ten grand. <laughs> I think you never went to the new temple, so... so. Um, you know, just because I had... Well, I say good memories, mixed memories of the original. Yeah. Um, but it's just not Temple Gym, is it? No, nah, well, like, they should have just renamed it something else because Temple Gym is Temple Gym, isn't it? It's yeah, in the basement. That's it. Like, I mean, if you let's say Liverpool Football Club, if you kind of get rid of that club and then move to another location, <laughs> call it Liverpool Football Club, not Liverpool Football Club, <laughs> you know. Um, and I think. <laughs> Yeah, temple I mean, Gym was a Temple Street, wasn't it? That's what it's called, Temple yeah. Gym. Yeah. I mean, and to call it temp Temple when I mean, I don't think is Dorian even involved in it now. I don't think nah. he is, is it? No, nah, because when I when Dorian came last year, um, you know, obviously he was doing a lot of filming in my gym. So obviously he's if he had some involvement in Temple, he he would have been there. So um, I don't think no. Nah, as far as I'm aware, he's got no involvement in it or Lewis because Lewis trains at my gym now. I mean, the funny thing is, a lot of the guys I used to train with at the original temple, they do train at the new temple. Um, mm. Like uh, guys like Mick. I don't know if Jewel still does, um, but they were at the er, like original temple for years. Mm, yeah, uh, Martin Fury as well. And, yeah, you know. But I don't know. For me, it just lost that. And I think, yeah, I went to your gym, Ultimate Fitness, straight after. Yeah, because when I obviously when I left Temple, I wanted to create uh, like a modern version of Temple, um, like hardcore equipment, but in a better environment. You know, more modern surroundings, car park, um, sort of air conditioning, nice mirrors, but still have that same hardcore attitude um, sort of environment, which I think I pulled off because you know, the old Ultimate Fitness was was a great gym. And I it had I caught that sort of. Um, the essence of the, the temple i brought it with me i think i think that's what some gyms forget like one thing about the old ufb is where it was clean like a it lot of clean, hardcore yeah. gyms they think to be hardcore it's going to be a shit hole. <laughs> you know it's got to have like holes in the wall and dust everywhere it's not the case no hardcore is like the equipment the people that train there the music it doesn't necessarily have to be dirty i mean i, I hate dirty gyms i mean like imagine now it's Spotless in it, uh, Joe. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I think uh, for, for a big gym, we try and clean it, clean it as much as we can. I mean, there's no excuse really. Yeah, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't like if it was your front room. You know, you wouldn't walk around with pillows all over the floor, and okay. you know, you, you'd take pride in it, which what you should do, especially as a as a business owner. It's, it's you at the end of the day. You are that business, Simon. So, yeah. Do you think it's no, hard, sorry. sorry. Do you think it's hard trying to get the balance between? let's say that commercial side of attracting let's say non-bodybuilders yeah. and then keeping the serious lifters happy as well do you find the balance okay or do you sometimes um well you got you got to break it down how many serious competitive bodybuilders have we got uh um, ultimate fitness not many probably how many competed my show last week in the bodybuilding class two tim and femi no three we had three and like we we got six hundred members, so that is a very very small percentage. Yeah. So you can't really cater for like less than like one percent. Yeah. But how? Do you know what I mean? So how have you you got to sort of um, have like a commercial hardcore feel, but with a commercial surroundings. So obviously the gym's nice and clean. It's got good equipment. It's got all the cardio stuff. But I think you can have that um, balance of both really, just because it's my uh, shiny gym doesn't mean it's not hardcore. Yeah. I think as well, like if when we're showing people around for if they want a day pass or they're just signing up for the for the month, um, you know, I always try and stress how special some of the pieces of the equipment are, and then mm. they might ask a question as, 
oh, well, where, where does that come from? Or, or whatever. Or we say, like, oh, we've got the original pullover, and they're like, oh, what's that? And in a way, I'm like, how the fuck do you not know what that is? Yeah, but, you know, yeah. you're trying to educate them so then they appreciate yeah. the, the environment that they're in as well. It's not just some crappy life fitness fucking, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think, I think people that do sort of travel from gym to gym, they, they sort of know the equipment. They know, like, about cyber yeah. tech squat and prime and, you know, stuff like that. So that is, that's why we we do sort of handpick some some of the good machines for the for ultimate fitness. So yeah. Sam, are you still are you training now or what's your what you're up to nowadays? Football. <laughs> so I mean I train for fitness mainly nowadays. Um probably still weight train three, four times a week. Um but I play football probably twice a week. Um I do sprints, I do um long distance as well, um things like tough mudder. Um properly into the fitness side of things that so what made you sort of a uh, transition from like hard I mean, you were a hardcore bodybuilder was you know, it was one you know you were you lived and breathed it if i remember out of everyone you were like mr bodybuilder yeah. so from going from one extreme to sort of a uh, what made you sort of made that change you know what it was i mean i i took a break um came off all the supplements as well and it took a long time to recover being honest um i'll probably say for six months, I kind of felt a bit crappy. Um, mm -hmm. But once I got past that stage... And when I you were saying off the supplements, I mean like totally off or TRT? Yeah, totally, yeah, totally off. So yeah. totally off. Um, and my my whole body, it's like my hormones kind of leveled out. And I started kind of putting on, almost like looking a bit fuller again, if that makes mm. sense. And it's weird because I realised how bad I felt being so heavy. And kind of, and how, how old was you at the time? So I was, I mean, I stopped early, really. I probably 25, 24, 25. Yeah, 25, yeah. yeah. So now I'm tw well, nearly 28. Um, so it's nearly been three years now. Um, and I mean, since that time, I found like healthier, fitter, um, fertility is better as well. <laughs> um, yeah, you recently become a dad, congratulations! Yeah, so I mean, that. I mean, that was one of the main reasons why I came off um, for my fertility. Um, and even that, you know, that took, I mean, everyone's different. Like some people yeah. can have kids lasting for five years straight. Um, and I mean, it took about two, well, it took about a year for my hormones to kind of get where they needed to be. And then, but one yeah. thing, um, yeah. one thing I'd definitely say is looking back, I really regret some of the choices I made in terms of like supplements, in terms of, I'd say. When you say supplements, you mean steroids? Yeah, okay. yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like all, like the diehard attitude as well. Like, yeah. I, I regret a lot of it. Like, I remember just like being, I remember being in hospital, um, being a bit unwell. And I remember my first thoughts in my head being like, oh, I want to do a show in June. I've got to get back. I've got to get back. And like missing out on all these like family events and holidays and looking yeah, back, no, it's, it's, it's easily to, it's easily fall into because I think everyone that gets heavily involved in bodybuilding they get that tunnel vision and they don't see past it and they don't they don't really think about the health they just think about the next next show and and honestly like it takes attitude. It's so weird. Like um, as I've kind of got a bit old, they say you get wiser as you get older. Like especially like with the baby now, like I look and I, I just, I pray to God that I hope what I did, let's say five years ago, it doesn't come yeah. back to all me. Yeah. I don't think, I think you've, you escaped at the wrong, the right time. Definitely. I mean, it's just, so, it's, I really wish as well when I was competing, I did way more fitness. So yeah. I, obviously I know bodybuilders, you know, we look at like low intensity cardio. We do, you know, maybe six to eight reps, maybe twenty reps. That's more for fat for fat loss, isn't it? Rather than fitness. Yeah, I mean, I wish I wish I was you know doing let's say a bit bit more hit. I was still playing a bit of sport here and there. Mm. You know, battle ropes. Um, but I'd you're say doing it now. But you're doing it now, which is the main thing. So yeah, you fit, yeah. You look fit, you know, every time I see you, look, you look, uh, <laughs> you look ten years younger. You look twenty eight now, right? <laughs> he looks. He looks like in your forties when he was heavily juiced up. Oh, don't get me started. I mean, you look at some of the younger bodybuilders nowadays, and they look like fifty. It's yeah, not, your, not complexion, a good look. your complexion has improved as well. Your skin tone and your appearance. 
you do look younger. I mean, I remember um, I as well. Like, I can I sense know. my personality's changed. It's weird. <laughs> I remember seeing Sam. I think it must have been the last time you were at your biggest. And you was walking, walking around the gym like a gorilla. And you just had this massive two-litre bottle of Coke. And he was like, yeah, I just got some insulin. Time to get a chest pump. <laughs> so what's, what's the condition you got up to, Sam? Um, ooh. I got to about 270. Um, so, so, I mean, it wasn't like... A, yeah, it wasn't like a pre-270. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, now I'm about... Two stone was hair on his back. <laughs> <laughs> So now I'm about 220, so I'm still about like 100 kilos. Yeah, um, with that time, but yeah, but feel but, much better. Yeah, but like, I mean, because I, I manage the weight differently, it's weird. Like, even when I was like in prep, let's say, and I competed under 100, I mean, I'd feel so much worse than I would now, if that mm. makes sense. Because even diet wise, like now, you know, for me, my main kind of source of energy is carbs. Protein is just when and yeah. where, you know um fats as so well would, you, would like, you still eat six meals a day now or would you do you only three, three times a day or you're not bothered uh, do you know what? sometimes it's two times a day sometimes it's four um yeah. tonight i had a five guys and uh fries you um, know what i think if you, if you are relaxed about your diet I mean, I'm, I mean i don't eat five six meals a day sometimes same as you i eat two meals sometimes i eat three and i think that's the best way it's, it's more intuitive isn't it when you're sort of having to force some food down my digestion is so much better as well yeah yeah I think, food, then. yeah 100 percent. i think as well if if the goal still is for someone who's really pushing to be competitive i think doing it in like cyclical everybody else does everything in cycles you know training gear food should should be one of those things where you know you have like little spouts of pushing food hard and then yeah. pulling back and focusing on your digestion and resetting and going again and you know and doing it that way rather than just fucking pounding it till the wheels fall off because mm. you know it's, it's not sustainable at all. The weird thing is as well, I think just kind of having a relaxed mentality, um, less stress. Less I mean, stress, I find like my training now is so fun. I love it. Yeah, you enjoy it. You enjoy it more. Yeah, definitely. Like I love, let's say, doing like. So when I was training, I used to typically do like two working sets. So let's say I was doing like, I don't know, like a bicep exercise. The first set maybe be like six to eight. Then the next set would be a back off. Whereas now, like one week, I might like pyramid down. The next week, pyramid up. I might just do chest and back together. <laughs> Anything really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I love it. Yeah. Whatever's sustainable, isn't it? I mean, same here. I haven't got a set routine at the moment, apart from legs every Saturday. But, you know, if I miss a day, if I, if I miss Chess Monday, uh, it doesn't really bother me. I'll, I can catch up on a Tuesday. And uh, I think what it is, Simon's realised he doesn't have to train calves and look at the size of them. So he's just thinking, oh, maybe the rest of the body's following the same way. I, I trained them last Saturday, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, one thing i found as well, like, once you stop bodybuilding, you'll always have that base. That never goes away. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. I mean, when you yeah. drop your meals right down, you still retain some of that muscle density. I mean, everyone's still, I mean, everyone in like the football world and kind of sports in general, they think I'm really jacked still. And it's just like. Well, you're not small, are you? are still two, like 220. Yeah, I mean, but. Football is like, 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 like 60 kilos, isn't they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, when you compare it to like, obviously, but like bodybuilding and that, it, it's, it's so weird to see. Um, but I mean, in terms of like leg training, that's one, one area just. I mean, I never liked training when I was bodybuilding, as you know. Um, and now we did have some good sessions like... actually. We had some, we had some good uh, leg sessions. Me, you, and Chris. Yeah, I, I miss them. To be fair, I find like nowadays, because uh, of all the football and sprinting, yeah. I just can't push legs anywhere near I used to, and recovering time. It's kind of like I had to sacrifice one for the other. Yeah, well, you don't need to do you? you don't need to uh, train like that. So, would you, do you think you would ever step on stage again and go go full bodybuilding mode? Do you know what? The, the funny thing is, I get asked this loads. And mm. I literally I got asked it yesterday by one of my old clients because um, I was catching up with him. And I think, in general, a lot of bodybuilders struggle to let go of bodybuilding. Yeah. And that's one thing. Especially when it's become a big part of their life and that's the, the, the sole aim. I mean, I struggled for years because that was my identity, but it's 
when you realize there's more to life than bodybuilding you got to sort of let go of and realize I mean, how much more there is to life because you kind of get get in your head like i mean like for me when i was younger it was like sam bennett barbarian barbarian classic mm. that was who i was and mm. there wasn't really anything else other than that like mm. just one dimensional yeah they, they wouldn't know my interest they wouldn't know mm. you know what i actually like what films mm. i like what football team i support all they know is our oh, bodybuilder mm. <laughs> and um i think there's a lot of kind of especially in from the competitive side of things don't get me wrong training when you're older is totally healthy and you know there's nothing wrong with that but a lot of people are still kind of chasing this dream that's that's gone that's been a long time gone you know um and i just pro think, to, 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 to be a pro you mean to become life be a pro yeah i mean to be a pro to just, to just to, i mean to still do it like there's so many different pro cards nowadays as well yeah. um do you think do you think it's lost the um what's the word um i mean when i was back back when i was competing like in the 90s and early 2000s everyone wanted to, wanted to become pro because there was there was only one pro card and it, just, it was very elusive it was it meant a lot more much more prestigious now like when you win a british championship here you don't know you don't even know who's won it and what it actually means or because there's so many different federations but back back in the day there's some ukbff or efbb and naba so when someone turned pro you, everyone would know who who the pro was for that year until the next year sort of changed its purpose now i think with the social media and everything the pro mm -hmm. card being oh you're an ifbb pro okay cool i can put that into my profile and now mm -hmm. maybe i'm going to be able to get more money from clients and things like that compared to the next person i think um, it's whereas, well. yeah whereas before the card itself was the pinnacle you know that was, was yeah, yeah. that was it i mean like like you were saying so like when i first started it was uk bff one pro card a year and there'd be so many guys who'd miss out who would have made mm. good pros they would have made, but, yeah, yeah. i mean the problem is like nowadays like there is so many federations and there are so many pro cards and even like ifbb pro cards they're getting awarded out pretty easy um, it's all a uh, money making scheme now, isn't it? I think it's well, just yeah. money. That's it. And you think like bodybuilding when when you when I was in bodybuilding, bodybuilding was massive. It was everything. But now mm -hmm. stepped away, nobody else knows about it. Like it's such a niche. It's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like if you tell someone like, okay, I'm a I used to be a pro bodybuilder, they don't ask what federation. They're just like, oh, that's wicked. <laughs> and I mean, the funny thing is, I won that pure elite pro. Um, it was like a warm-up show I did four years ago, five years. And I could literally just say, I'm a pro bodybuilder. And everyone would believe it. Everyone from well, the you outside. Are. You're not lying, are you? You are a pro elite bodybuilder. That's it. And I mean, uh, truth be told, I mean, I used to have such kind of a, a, a negative view about kind of everyone turning pro easily and stuff like that. But I mean if they do it for their business and i mean it's a it's in my opinion nowadays um a miami pro a naba pro ifbb pro if it's it's all the same if you don't do anything with it mm. like if you get that pro card that's brilliant but nowadays it's not about getting it it's about what you can do with it because mm. nowadays a lot of people get it and it's a rest in peace to their to their Body career, career yeah. they're not competitive anymore yeah yeah, I mean, how many people can you name that sort of got their pro cards and they did a couple of pro shows and disappeared because they couldn't be competitive? And that's it. And they, they yeah. should have, hindsight should have stayed as amateurs. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. You think of those years they spend trying to compete and they're finishing 15th, 16th in pro mm. qualifiers. The amount of money spent on everything. And it's just obviously detrimental to health as well. Um, course, and it's yeah. just pointless yeah because you know bodybuilders are very stubborn in there they think okay i got 15th this year i'll push push it even further for a couple more years and maybe crack the top 10 and where 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 do you draw the line do you know what i mean and how far do you have to go until you do and if you do crack the top it's still it's still not enough is it i think that's one thing that i mean i think that's one of the problems with because it is such an individual sport you're always going to back yourself mm -hmm. You know, you're always going to believe. Like, I think everyone, when they start out bodybuilding, has dreams of being on the Olympia stage. And the thing is, because there's nobody to say, hang on, that's never going to happen. Because mm -hmm. people don't want to sound like dicks, basically. Yeah. Like, I remember when I was at Temple, when, obviously, 
so when like a lot of the bodybuilders left, I was training there, getting ready for a show with older guys who'd never competed. And they'd look at me like seven weeks out and be like, oh, are you competing next week? <laughs> and, and, you know, with that mindset, in my head, I was like, you know, smashing it. But you compare yeah. that with actual like sports and how they're structured. So, for example, like let's say Joe is, you know, a budding like footballer or let's say he's 15 years old. I can release him and say, Joe, you're not good enough. And that puts you straight back down to earth. And then you realize, hang on, maybe this level isn't for me. Mm -hmm. You'll still try, but you get a better sense. And then let's say you join another club and yeah. then they release you and say, you're not good enough. Do you kind of get, whereas with bodybuilding, yeah. you'll do a show and you won't place. And then you'll be like, oh, I'll do it next year. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But that's, that's the thing. That, I mean, especially like the British bodybuilding mentality. I mean, they seen like someone like Dorian, who was like an under underdog come up with Mr. Olympia. So they all think they're going to have that same sort of chance winning the Mr. Olympia title. And obviously Dorian did have that massive influence in the 90s when he came from nowhere and beat all the Americans. And uh, I think he set that standard. And a lot of uh, British bodybuilders sort of had that same mentality as him. I mean, even I did. I, I followed all his training regime, the diet, etc. And thought, you know, I'm going to be the first Chinese guy to be on the Olympic stage. <laughs> but everyone did have that mentality. Everyone trained like Dorian back in the 90s. They ate like Dorian. It was, it was all heavily. Because he, he was the man, wasn't he? And obviously, yeah. you, you guys weren't around in the 90s. But um, he did have that massive sort of influence on everyone. I mean, the funny thing is, when I when I was at Temple, um, I wasn't really actually a big fan of Dorian's physique. I've got yeah, to be you said, yeah, yeah. I I kind of I respected him, but it was actually Ernie Taylor who I was a much bigger fan of. Like I used to look at pictures of Ernie's physique and his videos, and obviously because I, I trained with Ernie for a bit, mm -hmm. and he was so cool with me. And um, yeah, for me, he was he was the physique I always preferred. And I remember one day when I was training. Um, how Ernie showed me and Dorian Sung Lewis came up to me and he goes, you know, what are you doing that? And I said, Oh, Ernie showed me. And he goes, Oh, well, my dad's a better bodybuilder than Ernie. So do that, do this. <laughs> was it tricep training? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was arms actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ernie had better arms than Dorian. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I loved like Ernie just had like a roundness to his physique. Like he just mm -hmm. popped and, like looking back as well, because obviously, you know, he did his like martial arts as well. And I mean, it's very flexible, wasn't he? Yeah, you know, physically fit. So I kind of have more respect for him, even sorry, even more now after I've stopped. So I started training in Temple. Uh, well, I had a gym in Litchfield, and this was like the late 90s. And I was, I was training, um, to remember a bodybuilder called Steve Cart. Yeah, um, Cov Body FX. Yeah, so St me and Steve used to train at my gym in Litchfield. Then Steve sort of migrated to a temple and he was training with a, a bodybuilder called Tommy Torvilson. I don't know if you've heard of him back Glutzilla. in the day from Sweden. <laughs> and, uh, he was known as Glutzilla, but he, he was so good as an amateur, they gave him a pro card. And uh, I think he was quite a good pro, actually. Um, so he was him and him and Ernie used to train at Temple. And I used to train every Saturday. I used to come up uh, on the train and train with um, Tommy and Steve. But Tommy was stupidly strong strong bodybuilder stupidly strong Tom, but, Tommy on the um the big gym in Norway now I think so yeah but he came he came from Norway with the dream of training at training at Temple Gym learning all the secrets and uh letting off Dorian but I don't think that sort of came to fruition <laughs> and uh, I think he ended up leaving because uh he did his own thing yeah. I mean, with um, with Ernie, I, I think, the, I, I, well, funny enough, my first kind of interaction was when I wrote into Flex magazine because he had a mm. column. In Flex. Yes, yeah, yeah. And this must have been when I was sixteen, and I got a reply. He wrote it in the magazine, and he sent me a couple of emails with like a rough diet plan. Um, and I thought, you know, he didn't have to do that. Um, yeah. and then when I started kind of working at Temple, when I was closing up, because he used to have a like key and train at night, um. And then kind of joined in the sessions. Um, and honestly, they were wicked. Like, I just remember him. I've never seen someone put on muscle so quick. Like, I think mm. he went on holiday for like two two or three weeks. 
then he came back and then a week later he looked like he could compete in a pro shop it was absolutely amazing crazy shape he done it early, Ernie. i think the last time i spoke to Ernie, i, I went for dinner with him about it's about three years ago christmas eve and uh so he had to retire because of his um accident but uh maybe he went out at the right time because i think towards the end he was he was for place he wasn't really placing any the, the top shows was he we're talking yeah, like I mean, late 90s early 2000s especially, especially when you look at kind of the health issues and kind of heart troubles a lot of bodybuilders have you never know it could have been a blessing in disguise yeah bad as that sounds and he got paid well he got a good payout for it so he's probably better off what happened to him the one that gets me was um sean roden like i was a, a big sean roden fan and i remember we went to see him in seminar and oh yeah we did that um did in dudley was it yeah that was it flex I yeah. Think it was. Flex yeah. And, yeah i mean when i heard the news that shocked me because he i mean he, he didn't seem like a guy who really pushed it either. Yeah. Um, you know, I know he got yeah. heavy in the off-season, but... Yeah, and obviously he had all the allegations against him with the uh, the rape charge and stuff, which obviously didn't help towards his stress levels and stuff. Yeah. I was in Dubai, actually, when I found out about Sean Roden, and uh, it was just like, couldn't believe it. Was he 44, 45, was he? Yeah, something like that. It's it's a shame because, I, I, like Sam said, like out of a lot of the guys, you know, you'd think oh, he's probably the guy who doesn't take much, doesn't push his body that that hard, mm. and then he's one of the, you know, casualties. It's a shame. It's a shame. Family man as well, and it's just a shame that 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 clouds like sort of over the the last stage of his career, really. So, so the last few of... years, so the last few years of all these deaths, um, has it obviously reinforced your you know, why you've stopped competing, stopped taking, obviously, supplements. Has it made you think, okay, I'm glad I've sort of stopped all this because it could have been you? Yeah, definitely. I think looking at bodybuilding, one thing that's kind of, I think it's calling out for is almost like a union type thing. Mm. Someone who's got the bodybuilder's backs. Because, mm. I mean, you look at any other sport, and it, obviously bodybuilding is a bit of a weird sport anyway, but you look at most other sports they have, a body looking after the athlete, the looking after their health, yeah. looking after this, that. Um, I, I reckon even some rule changes, um, mm. whether it's maybe like... So are you gonna, are you gonna start marking people down for condition? I mean, it's, it's, it's one of them, how, how would you do it? Because the, obviously there's a standard sitting now with, and you're gonna have to go backwards to go forwards, aren't you? Yeah, yeah I look mean, at some of the drug testing. Look at some of the drug testing they did at the Olympias. I mean, the year, the one year they did it, nineteen ninety, and everyone had dropped like twenty pound, and the condition wasn't as good. Then yeah, obviously I mean, the viewing was crap for that show. Yeah, I think I think open bodybuilding as well. I think from well from what I've seen, because I remember looking back when, I, let's say, seven years ago, if classic bodybuilding was around then, I probably would have done that. Mm. Looking at how I looked back then and then seeing kind of how it is now like i look at some of the physics now on instagram and you know it's it reminds me of the 80s 70s era of bodybuilding it reminds me of sergio oliva um arnie well the classic the classic physics the version yeah the bodybuilding but, should be classic though shouldn't they even the open they should they should be spicy with that classic still spicy yeah. with that classic shape I mean, Joe, I think you're a fan of, um, is it Nick Walker? Yeah, not so much. I enjoy the freakness, freakiness of his physique. Mm. Obviously, from a bodybuilding standard, like, he's, he's bad in one pose if you're judging it pose for pose. But as in the person who just stands there, like, that's not something I want to look like. Um, but I can respect, I respect it. And obviously, it's very competitive on stage because, you know, it's judged pose for pose, really. But. Because, you know, I mean, I look at guys like that. I mean, I think, this sounds terrible, I think it's Dallas McCarver Mark II, um, if I'm honest. Um, but, I mean, you look at, like, a lot of guys now, I mean, just, it seems like, I wouldn't call it bodybuilding, I'd call it muscle building. So, pack on as much muscle as possible in as quick as possible mm -hmm. and kind of disregard shape a little bit. I think we've seen that a lot the last few years. Yeah, I think it's, as well. Yeah. One, go on, sorry. Go on, you can. No, I think it's like I've recently I've been talking. Obviously, me and Simon talking a lot about you know late eighties bodybuilding 
and nineties bodybuilding, and how back then everyone's physique was distinguishable from the next person. You know, Lee LeBron had a certain shape. Francis Benfato had a certain shape. Lee Haney had a certain shape. You know, he was the biggest guy, but he had he he was the biggest guy, but still had that nice that nice structure, that nice shape. You know, look there, Flex Wheeler, Dorian, and and you can tell by the, the off, you could, yeah, you, could you can you know shape. you know the physique. Whereas now, I think everyone's sort of chasing what the the number one guy has, rather than improving their own physique to the best it could be. Honestly, looking looking back. Now, this is quite a big statement, but Dorian ruined bodybuilding, in my opinion, for at least 10 years. Yeah, you're not, you're not the first to say that. Look. Because that set a precedent of chasing mass and losing lines. And I'm sorry, but there's no way Dorian beats Flex Wheeler. I mean, you, you ask, let's you say mean, you go you to mean the, in the show, in this comp, you mean? I think in just general, to be honest. Don't get me wrong. I know Flex wasn't the best condition, but... Mm. It's body building. It's not. It shouldn't be a competition of who gets the leanest. Yeah. But if you ask, like, let's say you ask just a hundred strangers on the street, who would you rather look like? I guarantee ninety-five say flex. Yeah. yeah you're right. You're right. Yeah. Who, who doesn't sure. want to look like flex wheeler at the end of the day? <laughs> you know, is is you know is the perfect physique really? But is Mr. Olympia about being an obtainable physique or about being the freakiest physique? It's hard. I think somewhere in the middle is mm. is where you it needs freak, to be. You've got to have that freak factor because you're the best in the world. You, you know, you, you must exactly. Like, to me, Dorian didn't have an ugly physique. You know, I think Big Ramy has a very ugly physique. It's just yeah, like Dorian a mismatch. Like, Dorian was quite aesthetic. Part. Towards yeah. the end, he lost his aesthetic. But I mean, the earlier yeah. uh, Olympias, like 92, 93, 91, yeah. he was quite aesthetic. Then obviously when he got a bit distended, he lost his 97 lost is a crime. The 97 yeah. Olympia is a crime against bodybuilding. <laughs> and 94. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think 94 more so than 97 even, because besides the front double bicep and the side chest. Dorian wins every pose against NASA. Was that 97? 97, mm. 97 yeah. yeah. In my opinion. Dorian wins the back. Um, yeah, by, by it's, a shame, it's a shame that was NASA's weak point. Um, yeah, yeah NASA, really NASA beats him from the front, doesn't he? So it's yeah, yeah. Front double bicep. Front to, me, I'd, to me, I'd rather have a good front rather than a good back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is weird, though, isn't it? Really? When you look at the track record for the Mr. Olympia, you know, most of the Olympia. time they are more dominant from behind. Yeah, but they were, I mean, previous, I mean, like Lee Haney had a good chest as well. Yeah. Uh, Arnold had a good chest, good arms. Uh, yeah. So most Mr. Olympia pre Dorian, they did have like the thick chest, and Dorian's yeah. chest was a bit of a weak for him. And he missed that. Chest and arms, really, wasn't it? Mm. I don't think it helped that he had before having um, Ronnie Coleman after after Dorian. You're just talking about attaining the unachievable. I think even if you look at British bodybuilding, like I think you know, you look at like JP for example. I think that kind of set a a kind of trend of focusing more on the size aspects and yeah you know pushing it to that next level yeah i um there has been a decrease in that style of training again though i do think that the last couple of years with the success that you know high higher volume trainers have had like patrick tour milos Sarsev, um you know and a couple that even the british british coaches you know callum from muscle mentors and a couple of other guys who've really pushed more volume in terms of just training specifically. Um, so the guys who who have that strength-based background, like look at James, the last two years, his, his physique has improved massively. And he's, in my opinion, it's probably because he's, he's started to refine his physique rather than mm -hmm. training push-ball legs and, so you know. Power all the time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he's got, he's got enough size, isn't he, really? So he just needs to yep. sort of bring out key areas. Bring that volume. It's, really to legs. Mm. it's doing the um I think I saw a poster of the um the Arnold 
Is it the UK one? Yeah, he's doing the UK one. But the, I was having a discussion with um, I can't remember who it was with now because it was they were talking about how who who's going to win the Arnold UK, and I was like, well, if you want a comparison of polar opposite physiques, you know, is James and Mark Hector because they yeah. they're complete opposites, um, and it's sort of like apples and oranges. What what do you like? Is so, um is Sampson doing it? No, I don't think so. No, he, I think he's got a good physique. Oh yeah, I think Samson's the best UK bodybuilder right now. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Who, who else is doing it? UK guys. Jamie Anyone Jones. Know? Uh, James, Jamie the Giant, um, Mark. I don't think anyone else is doing it in the open. I know Jamie Dorego's doing two twelve. Rob Taylor's invitation didn't get sent out to him, so he's not doing two twelve. No. Well, he's doing the Olympia, isn't he? Well, I know he's doing the Olympia, but, yeah. you know, I think the one person, me and you were talking about the other week, weren't we, Si? Um, I think the, the, the guy who's not talked about enough is, is Sasan. So, yeah, he was, well, I don't know what he's kind of been doing the last few years, but I know, like, maybe 2017, I think he did the yeah. New York Pro. Looked really good. Yeah, yeah. New York and Cali Pro, wasn't he? He, yeah. he came second to, to Nathan, didn't he, in 2018, California. I think that was his last show. Um, you know, but I, th- I think the the battle for the best in in Britain at the minute is well, Nathan's still the best because he's won the most shows. But I think up and coming, you know, Samson is going to be proper dangerous in a year or two. Yeah, I mean, I, not that you know, I've been massively following it, but I know that the guys I said a couple of years ago, Samson, Mark Hector, um, Samson yeah. was kind of already there for me. Um, a lot of the younger kind of British guys have got pro cards. I don't think they're gonna. I think with Mark Hector, because it's such a big frame, he yeah. still needs. I mean, I've not seen him compete when's the last time he competed three years ago. So uh, I think, depending on how he looks this year, I know he has put a lot of size and he's still got a big frame to fill, which will take yeah. you know, a long Have time. Have you, either of you guys seen um, Clinton, uh, Quinton area in Canada? Heard of it. No. Cray, crazy physique because he's only 24 25 um is he a pro is he yeah he's a pro canadian pro he's done a okay. few shows got top five a couple of shows but you know his, his proportions and structure is is insane yeah flex flex has retired hasn't he flex lewis yeah yes. retired yep. i sort of uh, I, I, re- I sort of put that last year i thought he wouldn't he wouldn't Go back on the stage. I sort of knew yeah. it. Uh, I I'm think going to his gym in, um, I'll go to his gym in August. So if, I, if, he's, oh, if he's there, he's actually. I think he's back in Wales at the moment. Back in UK, isn't he? From what I've seen. I think obviously what's gone on in like you know with all the deaths and everything, and he's probably you know well you think he's been doing it since for such a young age. 15, I mean, 16, he's won yeah. the two onto Olympia. Realistically, is he going to be Mister Olympia? No, I don't think so. Um, and he's, you know, he's made good money. He's got his gym. He's got his business. Young family. He's just a baby as well. Yeah, I think I think he's done the right thing. Yeah, that's the thing because he's had so much success as a bodybuilder in two twelve. The only real is he going to win Mr. Olympia is very unlikely. Is he going to get top five? Mm-hmm. More than likely. Potentially that's yeah. realistic. Um, but if the financial side of it's not really a factor, there is there is no point in putting your health at risk. You know, he's, he's getting on a bit now, so pushing pushing for more size, you know, that takes more stress on the body. It's, it's, there's no there's no real upside to it, to be honest. And also when you've had like, I mean, he's had probably four years out now, isn't he? It's hard to get back into that yeah. mindset, that prep well, mode. You saw with Phil Heath, he only had one year off and came back a shadow of his former self, really. Um, with, with the Olympia, you need to be at it every year. You need to be, you know... Yeah. Flex has had a lot of time off training. Obviously, he's had the baby as well, so his priorities are injured as well. A lot of yeah, joint and he said, he could, surgery, and he said uh, yeah. this year he was trying, he couldn't get the motivation to uh, prep for this year. Or, uh, listen to his podcast, he said it was hard to get the motivation back. It's like Rocky think, Three when you lose that eye of the tiger, it's pretty much finished. <laughs> that, that's yeah. true. Like, once you get settled and yeah. you know, you kind of... become civilized. You don't feel like you've got anything to prove, and yeah. I mean, 
I mean, I wasn't obviously a pro, like, well, I was a pro bodybuilder, but I wasn't a pro pro bodybuilder. Um, You're a barbarian you pro. <laughs> you don't have that, you don't have that same drive anymore. No. Like, I just, like I said to you at um, UFB last week, when I was younger, when I was, you know, competing, once the pain, once I felt the pain during training, that's when the set would start. Now it's mm. when the set stops. <laughs> well, I think it's good to put that motor that sort of uh, drive into something else that's going to be more positive to your life yeah rather than like bodybuilding i mean use bodybuilding yeah, as sort of the base foundation but i wish others. i wish you know i wish i put that energy i had for bodybuilding mm. into kind of academic things into yeah. obviously like my, my coaching now um and i think i'd be in a, a lot better position um but I think I think that's one thing you can take away from bodybuilding. If you put that discipline into something else when you stop, or yeah, 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 and also that the trans the transition from stopping bodybuilding, like what we were saying about kind of it's hard to get out of. I think if you've got something else to move on to, they and you put that energy, energy. yeah, definitely. you know whether it's sport, whether it's a certain career, or you know. And that's what I did with. Uh, that's what I did when I stopped bodybuilding, got well, competing. I sort of channeled it into the gym, the creating ultimate fitness. You know, making it you know the same amount of sort of intensity I would put my training, I would put into like making a gym. I remember the first three years of the original UFB, I was like obsessed, obviously, because what happened at Temple, I sort of had yeah. to had a, a prove a point to prove and to making the gym as as good as it could be. Definitely, yeah. I think as well, like the gym, after everything that's happened in the world the last two, well, not this year, but the last two years, I think the gym has had a bit of a had a bit of a revival from its bodybuilding point of view as well, Si. Yeah, and also I think people have been locked down you know, over the last couple of years, not about to go out anywhere. And I think people, when the gym did reopen, they just felt really grateful that everything was back to normal and then they could train. They didn't have to like train at home or secretly you know, in the garage. <laughs> didn't take it for granted. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's nice. So, um, so let's wrap this up. Best favourite Olympia sound, which was your favourite Olympia? My favourite Olympia, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to say 2013 because I love the Kai and Phil Battle. Um, mm. I was always team Kai until I saw Phil on stage, <laughs> and then I, I remember looking at him. That and thinking, was it. Yeah, I mean it was off season, and yeah. he looked so just he looked unreal. I mean, even compared to like Roller, who's a great bodybuilder, and Nathan, mm. and I just remember it. looking at him and thinking, I could do everything in the world, I could take everything, and I'd never look like that. How about you, Joe? Favourite Mr. Olympia, yeah. 2009, I think. Jay Cutler. Yeah, Jay Cutler, Branch Warren. Um, yeah, 2009 or 95, maybe? Yeah, 95 is my, probably 95 is my favourite year. I've, I've got one for you, Sai. If you could have any piece of kit from the original temple, which mm. one would you have? Uh, that's a good question. That is, uh, I wasn't a fan of the pullover machine. There, you know, I didn't like it. Uh, I'll tell you why because it was it was it was fucking made for Dorian and not uh, if you feel a bit smaller, <laughs> yeah. you had like, smaller lats. It just didn't you didn't feel the isolation in your lats. I remember when I used it, I had to put like a booster seat in it, yeah, because <laughs> the seat wasn't adjustable. Obviously, the one we got our gym, it's you move up and down, but it was, it was fixed, wasn't it? I trained, oh, no. I trained on that three times with uh, with Miller, I with Rad. And uh, I was like, Rad, I can't feel anything. He's like, oh, you're just not fucking big enough yet. <laughs> and then when Dorian would used to use it, he'd leave all the fucking plates on. There'd be like 10 plates on both yeah. sides. You know? You'd be smashing your fingers, taking the weights off. I remember the, you know, the one-arm hammer strength row. That was good because yeah, it was good. really heavy compared to like, the new one. I mean, the new one I can use six plates pretty easy, but that one I struggled to do three or four plates on. And MJ's gym in um, Worcester, what's the way in Worcester? They've they've got one of those. The Mark One Hammer Strength. Yeah, also, right, yeah. Where the, the plates drop flat. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Side, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll say something with hammer strength. I didn't like I didn't like the pull down machine, you know, like the change room and stuff. I hated that. Yeah. And you know, do you remember the seated row? Like the, the seat kept on falling off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when it rained, yeah, it was like paddling in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the water. Um, yeah. For me, know, it was, was... I mean, I like the pullover machine. Um, I really like the leg press as well. The there was two the, leg presses, weren't there? The side bench and the pre core one. The I think it was the the white one. I the can't... blood guts. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, it's a side I bench really like that one. Um, the small with a small foot pad. I didn't. I think yeah. didn't like that. It felt like you were sitting on the floor. It was that. It was really low, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You literally just um, shuffle to the side and you'd like roll out of it. I did like. Uh, I did like the hack squat. The um, I yeah, did like the hack, the hack squat. Actually, good. that was a good hack squat. I think the the leg extension as well. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In low the leg equipment. Yeah. Well, uh, you when you when you were there, side, they still have the flex rear rear delt machine. They had a rear delt machine. It was a Nautilus one. It was like okay. um, it was Nautilus. It was two pads, and you just you lie on it. On. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it wasn't a flex. It was Nautilus. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, they did have a, a, a hammer strength rear delt machine before I, I took over, but I don't think anyone used it. It was such a big machine, and uh, I think they got rid of that. So when I was there, they took it took it out. But it is in blood and guts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to wrap this video up. Um, oh. no, that's just over an hour, an hour and ten minutes. It's gone quick, isn't it? Always yeah. does, man. Always does. Yeah, 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 yeah. So thanks, uh, Sam, for coming on. Uh, hopefully we'll get yeah. you on and back on another time. We can talk about more Temple Gym stories and um, life of Sam now. <laughs> uh, Joe, I will see you <laughs> very soon. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow because my... Uh... Delivery's coming, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, heard you, I heard you're competing, Joe, at the next UFB Classic. Yeah, n well, next we year. Did, I'm, we I'm did get on stage last week, didn't we, Joe? Yeah, I was, uh, I was handing out the trophies. Him and so. Big Sid. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Joe, I might, I might get back in shape just to give you a bit of competition. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it naturally as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Sam, so how can people get in touch with you uh, if they want any coaching or any uh, advices? <laughs> advice, yeah, I mean, tell them the advisor, Sam. <laughs> so one thing I'm kind of looking at doing now is, um, I, I, like I said, not, I don't really do the coaching much anymore, but if anyone just wants some advice on kind of how to transition um, from, let's say, like the bodybuilding lifestyle to kind of more functional fitness, how to come off, um, just message me on my Instagram, which is at Barbarian Training. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll put all the links in the box below. Yeah, so once again, thank you all for coming on and uh, we'll see you soon.